Hello everyone, Michael the Librarian of Magic here, finding and cataloging the magical and pointing you to it. Today is October the 20th, and I have another Disney villain drawing for you today to continue the uh, series here, drawing one every day for the rest of the month of October. And today's drawing is John Silver from Treasure Planet, 2002, I believe it came out in 2002. And um, I wanted to take a chance to draw this one because I thought it would be fun. It's got some uh, fiddly little details, which I like um, drawing sometimes and just messing around with. Um, and this came out okay. I thought I did a pretty good job with it. Um, it's not half bad. Um, and also because I think Treasure Planet is a, a pretty underrated movie in the Disney animated canon. Um, when it first came out in theaters, it really bombed at the box office. In fact... It was Disney's uh, biggest box office loss in the anime in the history of the animated canon, um, but that's primarily because it was competing directly against uh, the Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers, um, and it just, you know, they it, it everybody went to see The Two Towers, um, and Treasure Planet was sort of destined to not make as much money in that way. So it wasn't a huge financial success, but it was a crit a, a critical success. Um, critics liked it pretty well, and it was nominated for, um, a Best Animated Feature Academy Award, uh, that year. So, it, um, it did, it did pretty well critically, and I think people have revisited it since then, and, uh, look at it a little differently than they did when it came out. Um, and I, if you haven't seen it in a long time, or if you haven't seen it all at all, it's worth your time. It's worth a revisit, and it's worth a visit if you've never seen it. Um, check it out. It's pretty cool. It uh, It's based off the novel Treasure Island, um, and various versions of that novel as well. Um, Disney actually made a live-action Treasure Island film way back in 1950. It was their first ever um, fully live-action film the, that Disney studios produced um was treasure island so there's a tradition of of treasure island in um the company the disney company also produced uh, muppet treasure island so they've done this story a few different times a few different ways in this story they decided to go uh sci-fi with it and make it about uh treasure planet in, or treasure island in space basically they're looking for a planet that's a treasure hoard and in this version of the story, John Silver is a cyborg. He's got a cybernetic arm and a cybernetic leg and a cybernetic eye. Um, the character design, which I think is pretty cool and, and was definitely fun to mess around with, was um, worked on by a team of 12 different animators that was supervised by Glenn Keane. He was the supervising animator of that team. But a bunch of different people worked on John Silver. And from what I gathered, from what I read, um, in developing the cybernetic aspects of the character, this was a, this was a film that incorporated traditional hand-drawn techniques and combined them with cel-shaded computer animation. So this really was still a, a hand-drawn film that incorporated, um, computer technology and they kind of blended it together. And in order to practice, um how they wanted to get the design for John Silver just right, they created a computer-animated cybernetic arm, and then they combined that with uh, pencil animations of Captain Hook in order to try to get uh, the feel they wanted for John Silver just right, from what I understand. And then after that, they were able to do all kinds of cool stuff once they got the character developed. The cybernetic arm has all kinds of different functions and attachments. It's got a flintlock plasma pistol. They, there's a sword that gets attached to it, a flamethrower. He has little tools like scissors or a clamp and lots of different cooking tools. He's basically a master chef because he can do so many cool things with his uh, cybernetic arm. The eye has all kinds of features. Um, it's got thermal vision and x-ray vision, night vision, and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, the eye changes color when he's angry, so evidently it's connected up with his emotions in some way. Uh, it goes from yellow to more of a red color. And, um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a pretty rad character design, um, to have John Silver be 
a cyborg. Of note, you may, uh, you know, be aware that the character is very famously called Long John Silver um, in Treasure Island. In this version of the story, he's not called Long John Silver at all, just John Silver, basically, throughout the film. And he's a character that is basically a pretty bad dude from the start. He's this pirate. He's a space pirate. Uh, he's greedy and ambitious and all that kind of stuff. He's willing to lie, cheat, and steal to get ultimately to where he wants. But the idea behind the story is he has a change of heart because he develops a bond with this kid, Jim Hawkins, and that causes um, John Silver to kind of rethink his priorities in life, and he gets largely redeemed by the end of the film. And he's one of the few... Um, Disney villain primary you know antagonists that really has a, a true redemption um, or change of heart in the, by the end of the film. Uh, I know Amos Slade from The Fox and the Hound is another one, um, but I think it's pretty rare that that happens with characters, and John Silver is is one of those. John Silver was voiced by an actor of the stage named Brian Murray. Um, and Brian Murray did a f some limited film role stuff, only a handful in a long, a long acting career that spanned over 40 years. He only did six to eight different movies, Treasure Planet being one of them, and several TV appearances in various shows here and there. Primarily, his work was done on the stage. He was nominated for uh, Best Actor Tonys um, th on three different occasions. He had a pretty significant stint playing the role of Rosencrantz in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead. And he also uh, was nominated for a Tony for a play called The Little Foxes and also The Crucible. Um, he was nominated for an Annie Award for his work on Treasure Planet for uh, voice acting in a feature film. So he was a, a an award-nominated and award-winning actor and director of the stage. He spent a lot of his career directing plays and things like that um, and did did a good job with this role. He had an gave it an interesting presence and I think an interesting gravity to it. There's some real emotion that goes in into this role. Um, I think another reason why it gets overlooked as a film is because it doesn't have any real music, like nobody really sings any songs. Um... It's not a musical or anything like that. And Disney was kind of experimenting with, with that stuff during this era. And um, I think that's okay. I think it's not to this film's detriment that it doesn't. It's very interesting that way. And I think it's got an emotional weight that many of the Disney films don't have. Um, and the voice acting has a lot to do with that too. Uh, Brian Murray does a good job here as John Silver. So, yeah, that's pretty much some little trivia about the film and... Some of the people who brought John Silver here to life, um, like I said, it's it's worth a rewatch. If you've never seen the old school Treasure Island from 1950, that's also worth a watch. Um, the novel by Robert Louis Stevenson is a classic if you've never um, taken that on and so on. It's, um, it's just a fun pirate story and a fun adventure story. And this is a good version of it, Treasure Planet. So I would recommend it. And, uh, yeah, I hope this was informative and entertaining for you. Um, if Long, uh, if jo excuse me, not Long John Silver, if John Silver from Treasure Planet is one of your favorite characters, or if it's one of your favorite movies, uh, let me know down below. Uh, it was really cool to be able to do this one and, and, uh, sh shine some light on, on a, a not well thought about or not forgot or a often forgotten character. So, Thanks for taking the time to watch this. I'll see you tomorrow when I have another Disney villain uh, and every day for the rest of the month of October. Until then, bye-bye.